We just learned how important requirements are when it comes to testing. They help us think about the different partitions we want to exercise and give us tips about what to do when there's a boundary. In this week, we will test our software by using a different source of information, the source code itself. We call it structural testing, as we will take advantage of the structure of the source code to derive the tests. As always, let's get started with a concrete problem. Do you play blackjack? In blackjack, whoever is closer to 21 wins the game. So, given the points of two different players, the program must return the number of points the one who wins has. If a player has more than 21 points, she cannot win. If both players have more than 21 points, then the program must return zero. Our job here will be to look at the implementation and see what kind of tests we can derive from that. So, the play method receives two parameters, left and right, which are both integers. The, implementa the implementation first copies both values to new variables, ln and rn, then it checks whether they are greater than 21. If they are, the implementation changes it to zero. At the end, the code returns the greatest number. Pause the video for a second and read the source code out loud. Great. What we want to do here is to test the program by exercising as much as we can from its implementation. By exercising, I mean having tests that will make all the lines of the source code to run. After all, that's what happens when we run the program, right? All the lines are eventually executed. When we studied functional testing, or as we also called it back then, testing from requirements, we saw that the partitions guided us to think about tests. And after having thought about the partitions, we then designed the tests. In here, we'll first define a criterion based on the source code to guide us. So we sort of know where to stop or when it is good enough. A very simple one and good to get started is, for example, line coverage. Line coverage means that we will be happy when our tests, with our tests when all the lines in the source code are exercised by at least one test. Our blackjack example right now has 10 lines. So this means we will be happy when all these 10 lines are exercised by at least one test. OK, then our goal is to test all the lines, or as we say, to achieve 100% line coverage. Let's get to work. Our first test will try to exercise as many lines as we can. For that, let's make all ifs true. This happens when both left and right are greater than 21. Let's write this test. In the blackjack test class, we create a test method which creates a blackjack class and invokes the play method with two higher than 21 numbers, for example, 30. We then expect the result to be equals to zero. At this moment, you are familiarized with JUnit, right? Now, instead of running the test using the run test feature from IntelliJ that you are already used to, we will select the run with coverage option. Yes, IntelliJ knows how to measure the coverage of our tests. The first thing we see is that the test passes. We get a green test. That's good. Next, we can look at the coverage window that appeared in our IntelliJ. It shows us three numbers, but the only one we care right now is the line coverage. As we can see, IntelliJ says that we have 90% line coverage, as nine out of the 10 lines were executed by a test. We can even see it line by line. If you go back to the editor and open the blackjack class, IntelliJ shows near the line numbers, colors like green and red. Green means that the line was covered, uh, and red means that the line was not covered. And we can see that we missed one line, line 13. This is good. This tells us uh, what our next uh, test should aim for. Let's then exercise this line in a new test. For this, the left player needs to have more points than the right player. For example, 10 versus 9. In code, we can write a left player wins test. If the left player has 10 points and the right player has 9 points, then the left player wins and the program needs to return 10. If we run the tests with coverage again, we now get 100% line coverage. However, our test fails. 
JUnit shows us that the program returns 9 instead of 10. Oops, that's a bug. But that is, that is why we test, right? If we go back to the implementation, we see that the developer changed the return variables. The first if, ln greater than rn, should be ln and not rn. That's an honest mistake. Congratulations. You just learned how to do structural testing and you used line coverage as criteria. But there's more. I think we can do better than just line coverage. I'll see you in the next video.